they might be able to eke it out if they've, you know, gone through enough knowledge with these uh, players that they're facing from Northwood. So, uh, very excited to see how they're starting off here. It looks like for Michigan State B, they have Aster up on first, and I believe this is the Kazia that played yesterday. I forget their name, but... Um, oh, Naranot? I, I, is it, it's hard to say it, right? I'm not <laughs> sure. I only know the Michigan State players because they have their names on the back, but I recognize them because the uh, first set that we saw yesterday, uh, this Kazuya player went absolutely crazy. So we need to see if Michigan State B has an answer for this. And also, speaking of Aster as well, who played very well yesterday. I remember clutching out quite a few games. So both these players very strong, starting things off for Sunday for the crews. I think this is picks on the on the Kazuya, I want to say. Production can correct me if I'm wrong on that. But here he goes. Okay, here, yeah, starting things off with a little bit of Kazuya combo, getting 40%, but not anything more. Aster playing around um, Kazuya's danger zone, not trying to overextend here. Yeah, got to use that ground speed to force Kazuya to commit to an option and then dash in with the dash attack and turn things around real quickly. Already knocking this Kazuya very far away and gets Ooh. the double tap with the yep. back air to open things up. <laughs> Michigan State B finding the first stock in this crew battle right here. Now has to keep a little bit of a lead and get that extra credit before Kazuya takes the stock. I love the weight that Aster did there. Oh, get careful. Oh, yeah. Kazuya being able to reverse that after the weight on the air dodge from Aster. Both players playing this very smart and, you know, using their opportunities to the most of their advantage. The dash tag again opening up a lot of space here for Aster to get these combos started. Big hits in here already. 95% racked up on the Kazuya. Oh, but this electric could start something, but no, a little bit off on the tech. Maybe it's the uh, the 10 a.m. not quite warmed up yet situation. Yeah, got to get your hand warms in before they get started. Kazuya having a bit of rage here, looking to use that um, use that comeback factor, but it's not going to be here. Aster going to be eking out with that forward air and being 25% on a second stock might be able to save it after killing this Kazuya, but we'll see. Yeah, taking away that Rage Art is huge. We've seen those Rage Arts turn things around in a big way for Kazuya players when they're behind, mm -hmm. right? So taking away that comeback factor from a character who has too many comeback factors, to be real, uh, is, is pretty big here, particularly in this crew battle format. If you can hold on to the second stock the whole way through, that's just been a lead that adds up over time. Yeah, and you want to hang on to your stocks for this crew battle as well, getting back to 0% if you're able to take it out. Every stock matters here, especially in this final tournament. Ooh, a little slow on that platform tech chase. I see what Aster was going for there, but again, maybe the, the 10 a.m. warm-up moment hitting. Ooh, getting caught by that, getting caught by the fist, but not catching anything for it. Just playing this very safe, Aster not wanting to lose the stock now that drive uh, Rage Art is online. Resetting things with the down tilt a couple of times there, looking for an up smash for your troubles, but not going to find the mark. That's keeping Kazuya alive, and again, he's glowing and very scary. Yeah, there's that up air trying to get that kill. That down tilt being very good for Aster here as Northward tries to hang on, losing the Rage Art, and now they're in a very tricky situation trying to find a kill before they lose it, but it's going to be Greninja with the forward air. The patience from Aster there was so good. He knew his win condition with Kazuya in the corner was to find that down tilt in the forward air, and he just waited for the getup to come at the right time. And one thing that I've noticed in these, uh, in some of these crew battle matchups is that these players, they, they like to do their ledge getups pretty hastily, I would say. And so that's something that Aster read, that the, the, the neutral getup was going to come up pretty much immediately, and then he got rewarded for it. Mm -hmm. That's one thing that a lot of players don't realize at like an earlier stage in the game is that even though you're mixing up your get up from like, you know, jumping from ledge, rolling, you know, get up attack, the thing that they don't realize is that you're doing it the same timing every time. Right. So no matter what, uh, the opponent is just like, okay, they're going to do an option at this moment. So you have to also mix up your timings, you know, wait on ledge a little bit, get a little bit hasty, just make sure that your opponent doesn't get comfortable with their ledge advantage. And we've been seeing, you know, from yesterday, a lot of these players are really comfortable of, um, pushing their advantage state edge guarding, like, you know, um, the Ridley, I believe, yesterday, just standing at ledge. Rydra? Very good. Yeah, Rydra. Um, just being able to put pressure on the ledge, and a lot of players just jump into things from Ridley, even though they're mixing up their options. You just have to take those timings just a little bit differently, and that's going to push your gameplay a lot farther. 
I spent a lot of time on this commentary desk uh, complimenting So Good Pop. That's something that he's just been excellent at doing all week, and is mixing up those ledge get up timing. We may say that a little bit later in this crew battle, but first it's going to be Copal, the K rule, coming in second for Northwood, trying to turn things around versus Aster's Greninja. I'm wondering how this is going to work out for Copal, as, you know, he's comfortable with K rule, but if he gets caught in a combo from Greninja, he could be hit by, you know, big hitbox just because K rule's big. So you can survive a little bit, but you're also combo food at the same time if you're not careful. Yeah, I, that, that's the thing, is, is Greninja's so good at juggling everyone. You don't even need to be a heavy. He, he can juggle you from zero to like 80%. But okay, just going for these quick double back airs. Horizontal combos to start things out. I think if a combo starts in center stage, we'll see those up air chains last forever and ever. But yesterday we did see Copal soft parry one of those multi-hit moves with his up air using the belly armor. Oh, it's yeah. string, and it was super cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that, that just happening. And that belly armor can come into play when you absolutely need it. However, right now, both of them at high percents on their first stocks here. Copal trying to get one of these stocks out from K. Roll, reading a roll away, but not getting anything from it. Again, the timing there was the mix-up for Aster. He's mixing up his uh, misses on the tech timing and dipping really low for that forward air, but just off the mark, Copal staying alive and able to reset his crown position. What a oh! shadow sneak! <laughs> Wow, using the upward shadow sneak to be able to get that, and the hit into the blunderbuss is going to be taking the stock for Aster. Both of them being just very good with their moves. And also, uh, Copal using that uh, Nair up at the top, trying to catch Aster off guard. Just, you can never be too sure that you're going to find a kill. You might just get reversal at any moment. Valley Armor showing up big to get out of that corner pressure situation here for Copal, staying alive on this stock for longer and longer. Starting to rack out the damage, Ooh. and that's where the burst can come. You see the back air is primed and ready for Copal to end this instantly. Yeah, he's looking to end this, save that sec save that stock for the next match, trying to get this back to even for Northwood, as Mr. State B is only up one stock in this crew battle. He's shadow sneak once again, and it's just a good option to provide pressure and also an escape tool for Aster. It's just so smart to angle it upwards that you're not getting punished if you miss it. <laughs> How goofy was that neutral air just doing absolutely nothing for knockback? Uh, like that belly armor just lasted forever for K. Rule in that spot. Oh yeah, it's just just the side the super armor coming out. The forward air, Co Aster going to be finding one stock. Might find a second one, but at least getting one stock out of Copal before falling. Yeah, now you gotta get retreat to that slow and steady gameplay here. We, we mentioned how the co like the combo food that K rule is, as long as you can set up a vertical combo, but Ooh. oh careful there with that forward air from Copal. Yeah, very scary there. Aster could have lost it right there. This <laughs> the belly armor going to be reversing water shuriken and getting a little bit of damage. Copal needs to find this stock here real soon, otherwise the rage could come into play. The DI at these low percents for Copal has been excellent. We haven't seen a, a dash attacker down tilt into F smash land a single time here, even at 0% to 0%. Yeah, playing very safe, not overextending where he would get combo food and just being very oh. safe. Yeah, that forward air going to be doing it. He exploded. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you just got to be careful about that. K rule's just a heavy boy. And once you're at a high enough percent, most of those moves are going to kill. But. Koval going to be losing a stock because of Aster, and now down only one stock compared to Michigan State B, who is sending up their next player right now. That might have been a case of uh, I'm running away, DI. I think so, yeah, because <laughs> you're on the platform and you want to just get back to center stage, mostly position yourself. We saw Aster playing very well around the ranges of Kazuya and K. Rule in both those um, matches, but yeah, if you get caught accidentally when you're trying to run away, that DI is going to be very harmful. So can you see the name on the back of this tag? Uh, I, 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 I it's like have, the perfect I'm, wrong angle. <laughs> I might have gotten LASIK, but I didn't. I my vision is still bad. <laughs> <laughs> and I believe this is. Uh, okay, oh, this is Druish, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Palutena, another character that does a lot of good combos at early percents with that Nair up air and her throw combos. And also, Druish being able to use back air very well um, for Palutena, which is a pretty safe move that protects her. We'll see how this goes here. Northwood only down one stock in this crew battle compared to Michigan State B. This song has been my alarm tone for a long time, and it's, it's telling me to wake up right now. <laughs> so, all right, let's be alert for the commentary. 
Pelotena coming in, starting these combos big right at the moment. Mm -hmm. That up air covering that tech roll in on the platform and just extending that combo, getting up to 80%. A very good start for Druish here as Kobol's trying to find his way in, but being off stage and trying to get back in. Very difficult against a character like Palutena. And I really like the small battlefield pick as well here for Druish. He's taking away that top platform, which could be just a, a moment of respite for uh, K. Rule when having to land against this top tier. Yeah, and you have two platforms still to do teleport cancels, which are very easy for Palutena to do and can break Ooh. ankles. But that back air almost, almost killed. killing with max rage. You've got to be careful. You can't. You can't be comfortable for a second. K. Rule can just steal a stock here. Oh yeah, the, the burst from particularly Kobol's K-Roll yeah. is insane. But Explosive Flame. Perfectly yeah. placed to bait out that crown throw. Yeah, and eventually Explosive Flame is going to do that kill, especially at 160. The back air covering the teleport in. Druish having a little bit of trouble finding his way back on stage, especially in this situation with Blunderbuss. And now how do you sneak back on versus this K-Roll? He's perfectly positioned with these uh, these command grab attempts. But okay, the double jump will work Whoa. out here the and a re-grab. Yeah, not uh, punishing that air dodge there. Very scary situation for Druis. Has to count his lucky stars for not getting hit by that one. But the blunderbuss, like you were saying, very good positioning coming out from Kobol. You cover jump, you cover the, like any get up option. You just have to mix up your timings with mm -hmm. it. And you threaten to fall under the platform really at any time, right? So, mm -hmm. But here comes the, uh, the washing machine and the perfect stage control at this point. What do you do as K. Rule? There's no real great escape option to get out of these uh, these mix-ups. Druish needs to find his way out disadvantage, or otherwise Druish is going to run away with this three stock here. And that teleport cancel was battle. great. Oh, it's so scary. The up smash read is going to be beaten out by an F tilt as Copel manages to take a stock from Druish. Okay, air dodging down. Copel might be able to find a second stock here if he plays his cards right, but Druish's uh, game has been really good right. here. Careful of that back air. Oh, yep, it immediately presents itself. Yeah, it's just so scary. Both these players do very well when they have their advantage state. It's just that you have to be able to hold onto it for as long as you can. All right, Druish here on the ledge, trying to find this kill here. 165 on Copel. Any of these moves could kill, potentially. Using that super armor as effectively as possible to get up from the ledge with the crown appears to be Copel's escape. And yep, mixing up the timing as we were talking there, just able to hold onto the ledge, not even be worried about that explosive flame. Ooh, oh, that would have killed. It. Yeah, with Max Rage, Copel might uh, be able to find the stock here. Druish probably looking for an explosive flame here for this kill at 200. Absolutely would kill at this point. Both these players trying to play really cautiously. The up tail, no, the up smash is going to be taking that. Kobol pushing out another stock. After it looked like it could have been just down without taking a single stock, Kobol makes the comeback happen here. He's, He's taking two points. from really, the, from very far behind. And this is so scary because Druish knows that he has to find this stock here. Otherwise, Kobol's going to get back 200% from this final stock. Northwood looking to make a play here with Kobol. Kobol has set up shop under these small battlefield platforms now, and there's really just no great way for a Druish to find a way in. Oh! And he gets the spike! Wow, what an excellent play coming out from Kobol there, managing to take all three stocks from Druish. Wow. Just really good gameplay, really solid, not getting caught by any of those explosive flames being ca called out. And yeah, Northwood taking the lead here. As soon as Kobol went down to like the final stock up to 100%. It was just, he, he didn't get caught by anything. He, he Like, he had to take his lumps, right? Because you're, you're King K. Roll, right? So yeah. you have to, you basically start the stock at 100%. Yeah, that, honestly, that I think is his, his thought Palutena, process. Yeah. yeah. As, as long as you don't die from any of those, like, long <laughs> damage strings, and then you're able to actually, the, the thing he did, he just set up shop and found the perfect timings for those crown armors to just semi parry every single back air attempt mm -hmm. that Palutena was trying to throw out. And it was just all perfectly timed and it, he lived long enough to make the magic happen. Yeah, it's kind of like when you see like Skydray playing on Cinnaroar and getting up to 200. It's that point where heavies are know that they're going to die and they have nothing left to lose, so they just play their game and you just have to respect it at times, you know? Exactly. That's but. what makes them so scary in Ultimate specifically. Mm -hmm. But it is going to be another top tier to try and swat down this crocodile. Pyra and Mithra coming out to play. Yeah. And only one stock here with Copel, but Pyro Mithra has the exploitable um, 
recovery at times from both of them. So if Gobel plays his cards right, maybe he can find the stock here, especially starting at 0%. And it looks like he's going to be starting off with an explosive 40% combo before Mithra starts her game. All right, looking things here. Copal is kind of in a little bit of a tricky situation. Never mind, that just got reversal. <laughs> How did you turn that around? Yeah, so it's, goofy. It's just going back and forth where they're just trading advantage states with another one another, as Pix is just, you know, covering this area on stage against Copal before pulling out Pyra here. And now it will be Pyra out to play, but you get that parry into really nothing, and it looked kind of goofy, but. Unfortunately, that just gives Copal the stage again. We saw how effective he is when he's sitting up under these platforms. Oh. You switched, unfortunately, right into the cannonball. You just have to take the L here. Yeah, you can't do anything. You've you know, used all the resources you can. Copal being able to take another stock, trying to look for cheese maybe, with a Nair, not finding it, as Pix is able to escape. However, Copal's just going in right now, not faced by any top tier here. He's playing with house money at this point. <laughs> this stock has gone on for far too long, and I think he knows that there's fear in Michigan State B's camp and the longer this crocodile stays alive. Yeah, it's just you see the other players struggling against this K rule, and if you know that you're next, you're, the pressure's on you. Somebody's got to get rid of this K rule, you know? And, and it continues. Look, oh, looking the for a read. reset. And that's another one! Copal going on a tirade right here. Will anybody take down K. Rule? There are no answers for K. Rule right here. 150, 160. Michigan State B has to make a play here if they want to stay in this battle. Yeah, the, the more bleeding you take, uh, <laughs> it, it's going to be harder and harder to come back. There's still so oh. many great players left on the Northwood squad. There's JJ and So Good Pop waiting in the wings. Oh, but it, yeah. There we go. Okay. Prominence Revolt will finish off the job. Old Reliable. <laughs> yeah. But that was what? Uh, that was six stocks? Six, or, yeah. Five or six, six stocks because uh, Copal took out uh, Aster at the beginning, too, I believe. Aster had two stocks. So seven. Yeah. Or, yeah, seven. Yeah, because two from Pix, Aster, and then all three from Druish. An amazing play right here by Copal, starting things off strong for Northwood after Kazia fell. And it looks like they're sending up the next player, which is Jaja, coming up here. Kirby against Pyramithra, I'm not entirely sure, but it's only one stock that you have to worry about. Yeah, it's only one stock, and we've seen Jaja come up with like the funniest looking gimps of all time at just really strange percentages and really strange positions on the stage. So, I wouldn't be surprised to see that be like the, the plan A here for JJ. Is, is put, park his butt at the ledge, go for the inhale to start things. I think, yeah, the key things are inhale, down air, and then maybe if you get like a bear train going, but you're not as mobile in the air as Jigglypuff, so I'm not sure how that would work out. But moves like... Um, That's Pyramid, they probably only just need one well-placed back air if they're off the stage already. I was going to say, if you place them off stage at a horizontal distance where Mithra has to photon edge, perfect down air for Kirby. It's so easy to hit, especially against a move like that, that you'd be able to get that. Or maybe even go for a stone if you're feeling risky, you know? Mm -hmm. Plenty of options here for JJ to get the gimp on this character. And it makes sense because you really don't want to be playing a, a, a neutral versus neutral situation. Versus yeah. a character with so much speed, so much power, and just great disjointed hitboxes. So, again, that, that's kind of the story of Kirby in this game, though, is everyone's got speed, power, and disjoints that you don't. So Yeah, that's just something you have to um, eat as Kirby. No pun intended, honestly. But <laughs> I, I know how hard the struggle is dealing with Pyramithra when you're a stubby character. So, we're going to see what they're going for here, starting on PS2 in this match. Six stocks to four. Four is now the count after Michigan State B had a pretty good start with Astros Greninja taking four stocks. Mm -hmm. uh, it ended up being the Copal show after that, and so this has set up the stage for this Kirby versus Pyra. Yeah, we're going to see what they're going to do here. Both players not wanting to overextend against one of their players, one of the others. Getting a little bit of 6%, but nothing too crazy. You really think that uh, Mithra wouldn't care about what Kirby could do, but like I said, you know, you don't want to overextend by accident. Anything can happen. Yeah, with Kirby's back to the ledge, that's where it is the scariest time to overextend. So now just forcing Kirby to come into the center stage is going to be a big deal for the neutral game here. Mm -hmm. Trying to get in with that dash attack. 
And Foresight already coming in clutch a little bit in this match, reading an air dodge too. Kirby might have a little bit of trouble getting it in on Pyro Mithra. And Pyro can just make Kirby explode right now. It's <laughs> totally feasible. Like a, a down air to up smash combo would probably kill Kirby at this percent. I would think so too. Maybe a little bit more percent where you could get um, tilt kills. But yeah, down air, up air, or up smash, or just an F smash, I think are going to be the ones to kill here. Both players sitting at 70, almost 80% playing this game of, you know, trying to bait the other one out. Just a game of chicken here. Oh, I'm looking for the snipe on that final cutter with the down air from Pyra. Not quite finding the mark. It's going to keep JJ alive. And JJ finds a really critical poke with that back air, but lazy end to turn things around the other way. Yeah, it's just a really scary situation for JJ. He wants to take this stock. However, Hicks isn't letting him have it easy. I mean, they're just both going at it, throwing these moves. The bait from Prominence for Bolt not catching JJ off guard. And he's just trying his best to poke in with these forwarders and backers. It's not leading like too much percentage, but the stage control is so important here. <laughs> here we go off stage. The bait switching the Mithra and then back to Pyra. One of these moves can kill here really soon. Maybe even an up throw. But that dash tag is not going to do it. JJ being able to hang on to all three stocks against picks. So as we predicted, it was just a straight up mano a mano fight. No gimps or nothing involved. Just JJ finding the stock on the uh, good old fashioned dash attack on a whiff punish sort of way. Yeah, none of them really tried to overextend off stage. It was just solid neutral gameplay. Just Baiting back and forth, back and forth. I think that shows respect for the shenanigans, as you mentioned. It's just like the like the utmost respect. It's like I'm not gonna commit to, to pushing into Kirby when Kirby's back's at the ledge, and I'm also not going to commit to like getting hit by you know the the Pyra down air at like a really low percent and exploding. Right? It's just they they played around each other's burst options very well, which led to that uh, whiff punish in the end. Yeah, PS2's blast zones at the bottom being a little bit higher than normal. Um, Really, just if you got hit by that down air, even at like 20, and the spike thing in this game where it moves the blast zone up if you yeah. get spiked, you're gonna die real early, and you wanna hang on to all your stocks in this crew battle here. But now, this matchup happened in the crew battle yesterday, and it was really bad. <laughs> really bad for who? <laughs> for for Zamo. Oh no. He, he got. Ooh. You might see it here. It, it's, it's Diddy Kong recovery versus Kirby situation. Oh yeah, and Kirby could just. Playoff stage. Zamo yesterday having a lot of issues against Rydra as well, um, using his banana. And I'm seeing JJ playing around with banana a little bit himself. Just you have to hang on to that banana as long as you can as Diddy Kong, because that mixed with monkey flip is basically your entire kit. Where yeah. you have a lot of pre oh. Uh. Okay. Uh, Disconnected the controller means one stock gone, I suppose? Yeah, I believe so. So JJ going to be taking a little bit of a penalty there as the controller disconnected. Uh, good for Zamo, however, making up the lost stock with one of his own. Yeah, uh, and th this is the spot we're talking about, where, where Kirby's got his back to the wall. And just, I, I know you have to come to me, but getting the damage oh, in. Yep, no. there you yep, go. Yep, yep, that's it. That's the stock. And the <laughs> footstool, the boot, JJ, going to be <laughs> playing around with this too, getting inside Zamo's head maybe a little bit. But Zamo doesn't look faced at all, dash dancing like it's melee. <coughs> now holding on to that banana, we, 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 there was a lot of shenanigans that happened in between you talking about holding on to the banana. And it's very important that Diddy does so because this is one of those matchups where when the opponent gets the banana, it can be even more violent than when Diddy has it. Mm -hmm. Particularly if they have their item game lapped, right? Yeah, we saw it yesterday with Rydra for sure, using that banana somehow better than Diddy Kong, but it's just going to be, yep, like you said, if you have the banana, uh, Diddy Kong, it's going to be bad for you just using that just to hit the jetpack and get the crew battle win. That's pretty much exactly how it played out yesterday. Although, yeah. with the one stock being a, a controller DC, which, which you really don't really like to see. But yeah, it happens, but... Uh, just how Northwood drew it up, really. It's like the perfect counter matchup, and if I'm Michigan State B, I'm trying to avoid that ASAP. Maybe put Zamo in as uh, the point character, because JJ has really not been leading in this particular matchup. I was going to say, yeah, like, JJ has been kind of bringing up the rear, except for yesterday when he started off versus Dice when they were on the opposite sides of the stage. Yeah. Um, 
But most of the time, JJ is going to be at the end, and if you know that that's a bad matchup against your Diddy Kong, just send in Diddy Kong first, so that way you have a less likelihood to deal with that. Michigan State B also has to find an answer for Copal, as Copal ran away with a lot of their stocks, and it's like, okay, what do we have to do with K. Rule as well as um, dealing with JJ as well? And I think that having Diddy Kong at the front might be able to beat out K. Rule just due to holding Banana across the stage, pressuring with Monkey Flip, and just staying far away as possible from K. Rule. When it comes to the character choice versus K. Rule, I don't think they necessarily did anything wrong character matchup-wise. Like, 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 when you look into Kirby Diddy Kong, it's like, obviously, we want to avoid that. But they sent, like, three different top tiers versus Copal, and Copal just said, nah, I'll win. <laughs> so I, I think it's just kind of a, a moment where the coach has got to be like, skill diff, man. Let, let's, let, let's just tighten up. He's a low tier. You're a top tier. Find your advantages. We, we, we almost saw that with the Palutena, right? The Palutena game plan was really solid until it came to defending that last killing blow that let uh, Copal stick around at 200%. I think that the thing that, you know, all three of those top tiers uh, didn't have, though, was, like, their projectiles are pretty much set. You know, Explosive Flames is set distance. Pyramidra doesn't have any projectiles. Diddy Kong has the banana, but also Monkey Flip to react to what K. Rule's doing. And the command grab would go through belly armor. Right. So you could just invalidate that. So I think Diddy Kong might be the play there if they're able to time that right. But if they send in uh, Zamo first and they don't send in Copal unless they force it to happen, I don't think it's going to, you know, end up happening. Yeah. That's what's interesting about Crew Bowser right? is there's, there's a lot of different ways to slice it. Like so Northwood's play could be they see Zamo starting up. They lose their first player. It's like, JJ, get in there, get rid of Zamo. And as soon as JJ loses his stocks, if possible, then they send in Copal because they don't have Diddy Kong anymore. And this is all the math we're doing, c considering we didn't even see So Good Pop in that match. Yep. He didn't even show up. And I think So Good Pop yesterday, if you like added up all the stocks taken, I think So Good Pop was their best player on Northwood. And well, also, if you look at the singles bracket yesterday, So Good Pop was the best player on Northwood as well. Yep, that too. So. A lot of scary things that Mr. State B has to put in mind here as they are discussing what they want to do right now. I don't know how long of a time limit they have to do the, the coaching thing. Probably like five minutes or so. So we're, we're still chilling here. Uh, guys, remember, these are best of three crew battles between these colleges where the grands will be best. Maybe winners, losers, grands is best of five. I don't know if it's all three or if it's just grand. I thought it was all best of three, so... We'll see. It might, all, it might be all best of three. Case, yeah, so. if, if any of them are best of five, it will take a hot minute to burn through those. So, yeah, we're we're chilling here. We, yeah, we, we got a lot of Smash left today, guys. I hope you uh, are ready for it because Midwest Esports Invitational brought to you by DuPage Sports Commission. Look how well framed that is. <laughs> yeah, they're just right there. You know, it only took twenty minutes in the middle of doubles to frame <laughs> the, the <laughs> spots. <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, you know, they put on a great show here. Uh, we saw a lot of yesterday, just a lot of good production here. And, you know, very thankful that they um, were able to help out with this, as well as um, the Hyatt Regency Hotel being able to provide the venue as well. Uh, Shouts to them if you're ever looking to stay in the area around here in Lyle. Um, you know, excellent building, excellent hotel. Um, I didn't say overnight night because I, you know, live somewhat in the area. But right, me too. For those who did stay uh, overnight for the second day, I know a lot of them have good experience here. So shouts to them as well, uh, where they were able to help provide for setups. Mm -hmm. And er uh, shout outs to Elvin Shadow on the uh, on the lights. He was running the the light production yesterday. I think mm -hmm. there was some really fun stuff going on during the ceremonies during the grand finals between Atata and Min for the win. It was a good time. I did catch that. Yeah, there was like the whole lights were going. It was very cool to see. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, well, it looks like we're going to be starting off pretty soon with uh, the second game in this crew battle here with Michigan State B and Northwood. Looks like they're sending up their Kazuya from Northwood, and Drewish is going to be taking up the helm here for Michigan State B. Aster did a, such a good job of just, like, like after, I mean, it was the Copal show, right? But we do have to say Aster played great at the start. Just not allowing Kaze to even get the game plan started. Took away those rage arts so effortlessly. Didn't really lead to any big, long combos. Uh, we'll see if Drish can emulate the same thing as the point player in this particular matchup. Mm -hmm. Aster is able to provide uh, tips probably to Drewish as well. Being like, okay, don't overextend into Kazuya's danger zone. Like, you know, 
He's got his little bubble. You got to stay six feet away from him. You know, <laughs> <laughs> social distancing is the strategy. Yep. <laughs> versus this Mishima, he is toxic, and you want to avoid it at all costs. Mm -hmm. Especially that rage art when that comes into play here, starting things on PS2 in this game two, the crew battle in winter semis. Here's the big Nair combo, 50% coming out from Palutena here. But, you know, against Kazuya, if Kazuya gets one hit in, that might be the exact same percent he's getting from three hits. Oh, absolutely. And that's why you're seeing, again, the respect. If you're getting that one combo, you just run away. But, oh, here we go. Ooh, Going for a ride? No. Uh -uh. Yeah, missing the tech read there and being able to get out of there without taking a whole lot of percent. Okay, oh. I like the crumple. And you're dead? No! no! Bounced off the platform and getting hit by that side B, but still living great DI there, even on the edge of the stage. And with a second lease on life here, Druish might just make Kazuya pay. No, mm. okay, you land that back air a little bit too close. It gets parried and upbeat. Yeah, that parry was very good there for Northwood. Being able to take the first stock in the second match, looking to close this out with a clean 2-0. Here comes Rage Art coming online. We'll see if they're able to do anything. This is where it starts. This is where it starts. Yeah, just cash that in for 80%. You do not mind. Yeah, because if you die and lose it, it's like, well, that was pointless, so might as well take it. The up air catching Kazuya and taking that first stock by 80%, not good for Druish here. Okay, right. slowing things down a bit, just poking with the neutral airs here. Yeah, we're seeing Druish be a lot uh, more aggressive compared to Aster, and it's really not working out the best for him but finding a little bit of these tap percents, but if you overextend just even a little bit much, Kazuya is going to take that to the extreme. I turn it around, send this Kazuya to the ledge where you want to keep him there forever, trying to get an electric straight through, but looks like Druish spaced it pretty well and is able to reset the situation. Druish has done a really good job at bringing this back to almost an even game, parrying that laser but not getting the dash tech oh. and getting caught by another upbeat getting a little bit too aggressive around Kazuya's jump area. Yeah, the okay. took away that platform so expertly there, right? Okay, yeah, here you read the tech this time, and Kazuya was ready for it, but did not get anything out of it. Oh, Where are we going? Oh, this might be it. The mix-up with that back air, not catching it, but getting the air dodge, trying to go for a let's trump, not finding it. Druish might be in trouble here now that Rage Art is online. Yep, one of those connections is a big deal, but mix up the dare in the middle of that? Nice. That I like it. A surprising option coming out from Kazuya there. I wouldn't have thought to do dare in that situation, but I don't play the character. So. It, it, it's like how Bayos would mix in the dare, just kind of as like the longest lasting aerial that you can do in that spot. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's a killer move. You see it there. Yeah, it's took the sock pretty cleanly. Any move on Kazuya is honestly a killer <laughs> move, let's be honest. That character is strong, and you can honestly see that from, you know, how he looks. I mean, he looks a little crazy, so he's got a lot of those kill moves. But great start here, coming out from Northwood, being able to hold on to some of these Kazuya stocks going into, their, into Michigan State B's second player. It looks like... Their next player is going to be coming up here. Let's see what Northwood is able to pull out now that Kazuya has moved on to their second player with Zamo coming out right now. Diddy Kong versus Kazuya makes plenty of sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just that mobility, a little bit of combos, Banana and Side B just being able to catch as well. But you can't count Kazuya out. You never know what's going to happen against this character. Okay, starting things off, Zamo playing a little bit slower, not wanting to approach Kazuya, but going for the monkey flip side B, trying to get in a little bit. And doing the banana throw down and then re-grabbing it, that, that is a tech we see a lot of uh, Diddy Kong players use to make sure that when you throw the banana, if it whiffs, the opponent can't pick it up and then use it against you. And again, Kazuya absolutely can use a banana against Diddy Kong if he gets one in his hand. Like he needs it with all the <laughs> other tools he has in his kit, let's be honest. But yeah, great. Great stuff coming out here from Zamo right now, just not letting Banana go away from him. He needs to hold on to that as much as he can, using these Z-drops to mix up his timing with the Banana. And now Kazuya trying to slow things Ooh. down a bit, but oh, really 
clean off of the monkey flip there. Yeah, that Immediate was a, forward smash. That was an aggressive play coming up from Zamo and it paying off in spades there. Let's see Zamo holding the ledge here as Northwood tries to find their way back on. We're gonna see Zamo really find his element here. That, that's one thing that those matches versus JJ really prevented was any kind of momentum going Zamo's way. And now he's just in complete control. This is a different player than we saw versus the Kirby. Yeah, definitely a lot better play here now that he has that advantage state. And Kazi is a little bit in trouble here, trying to find his way back on stage. But 150, oh. Zamo going a little bit too low and losing a stock from an SD, which is very unfortunate here. Oh, and there's that banana, Kazi. <laughs> <laughs> Almost got something big there. Up smash from the ledge. Mm -hmm. That'll work. That gets the stock here. Yeah, if you can just find the stock, like it doesn't matter how you did it, just as long as you took, took that stock. Trying to mix things up with these diagonal angles of the monkey flip over and above the Kazuya. But Kazuya just swatting a monkey flip out of the sky with an electric. Yeah, if you get caught in that monkey flip being a little bit too aggressive, it could spell disaster. Didn't there, but you just have to be careful about it with Kazuya. Like, Zamo's been playing a bit more aggressive to Kazuya's range, which does catch them off guard. However, at the same time, if you get caught in that range, like, you could be dead from it. There's that monkey flip coming in again, just doing that little bit of damage that you need. Rage Art online. Oh, you could banana in a Rage Art for free. Why not? That, yeah. sound, that sounds dumb. <laughs> and with that Rage, Diddy Kong, it might kill if it happens near the ledge. That's why we're seeing the slowdown of this game here from Zamo for sure. Oh, there it is, yeah. Cleans up the stock. Yeah, aggressive F smash coming out and Zamo being able to capitalize on that. But that SD was unfortunate. I mean, that could be everything that, you know, Northwood we needs to win if they just win by one stock. It was an early stock um, loss from Zamo, and I'm wondering if he had held onto it, he could have gotten all three stocks through that Kazuya. That would have put uh, Mission State in a better position for sure. But <laughs> as it stands, uh, I mean, what's going to stop Northwood from sending out the Kirby again after it looked so effective twice in a row, going for the third time, right? Mm -hmm. Let's see if that is what their choice is or if they're going to be going a different direction. They're only down one stock, so Michigan State B isn't in a terrible position here. But yeah, it all depends on what Northwood sends up for their next player. Uh, so good standing up over on their couch, but I guess he just wants a sip of coffee. Maybe, maybe he's going up. Maybe on stage. you need you need that you need that coffee before you play. It looks like so good pop. Might be I don't know. They're no, like he kinda, he us. He's gonna go sit down on. They're all moving <laughs> around. <laughs> they're thinking about it. They're think, they're they're afforded a little bit of time here. So they're looking for the controller. And the yeah. jersey. Yeah, he, he's wearing a sweater. So got to get the jersey on stage, of course. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is going to be so good. This is the first time we see him. On Sunday, we saw plenty of him on Saturday, mm -hmm. both I in the cruise and in singles bracket. Singles, he got fourth, I believe. Third. Right? Third? Okay, my bad. I, I couldn't remember who um, Atata beat. Because I, I saw Atata in the Heretta like, got fourth. Heretta had a Heretta. great That's game what it was. yesterday. He was, he was on fire. I was going to say, yeah, I couldn't remember if it was fourth or third, but I remember it was before Grand's fighting Atata. That was one of those brackets where, like, if you looked at the bracket before the tournament, uh, and like you, you had a, a betting pool on not not even the order of who was in top eight, but just like the the names of the eight players who made top eight. I don't think anyone would have guessed that those eight players would have made it. Someone would have gotten like five or six of them. Yeah, it, it's just like you know all this talent that we're used to seeing in the region, as well as all you know all these colleges coming out. You don't know what's gonna happen. What as what upsets are gonna be going on, but. Moving on into the game now, so good pop we fit versus Zamo, and two stocks to three. Yet another character who you really don't want to give a banana. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've seen from we fit yesterday that uh, deep breathing is just going to do a lot of damage. You can catch a falling nair here as so good pop tries to play aggressive while uh, Zamo is smartly waiting out deep breathing as much as he can above these PS2 platforms. Not a falling there, but an air by itself still does like 20% for some reason with deep breathing. Because why not? It's just such a scary character that has a lot of kill moves, and we've been seeing from So Good Pop, especially yesterday, going in. But right now, both of them sitting 
at medium percents with Zamo being a little bit higher, but now making up that lost percent. Waiting out the deep breathing does seem to be the plan here for Zamo. Like he, he was on that platform, he taunted on the platform saying, come at me, I know you want to be aggressive with this tech, right? But nah, now I'm just going to reset because I got that with banana to trap you. I like the play there coming out from Zamo, not grabbing the banana as fast as he can, and Sogapov taking the bait, trying to go for an up smash, catching Zamo, wanting his banana back, but did not work out for him and going to be finding that percent, but oof, got to find your way back to stage yeah. with Wii Fit. That back air scary, the up air scary. Just just very scary to deal with, and Sogapov trying to find his way back on stage against this banana. I, I really like the way that this ledge trap is going for Zamo, and he almost gets the monkey flip grab KO at 160 plus percent. Oh, yeah. sliding in with a forward tilt. Yeah, and catching the banana too, finding that kill. Zamo's just doing a really good job of waiting out Sogapop with this Wii Fit deep breathing and doing so much to this stock. Now slowing things down again. Yeah, you have all the time in the world to get that deep breathing online, but no, Diddy Kong just finds the range to interrupt it. Oh no, he is charged, he did charge it. No, he, he actually barely didn't get it. Oh. He was, the timing he was, okay. is a bit weird on deep breathing if you go for that second one, and Zamo was able to try to almost bait Sogapop into almost getting it, but not quite. And just knowing the timing of, you know, we fit to, you know, bait them out for that, thinking that they can get that, is all you might need. Soccer ball creating so much stage control now, but retreating as far away as possible and with that banana. banana. Yeah. So that banana, you know, Zamo has to approach now. The tool is lost, and Sogapop is in a good position here despite being in the ledge. Oh, it's very scary. Using a lot of rolls to get out of here. Sokobuck holding on the banana for dear life. Using it here and finding the kill with all that pressure. That was kind of an insane situation that Sokobuck pops it up there. There's a volleyball. There was a banana Z drop. And the only way to attempt to escape was a jump. And that's exactly what Sogood wanted. Yeah. I mean, we've already seen, you know, online Wii Fit being really good on ledge using Sun Salutation as well as the soccer ball. You throw a banana in there, I think he's unstoppable on ledge <laughs> with all those tools. It's already good on ledge, so. Oh, we're oh that here. shield's so low. Yeah, the soccer ball and the actual side B hitting the shield, just doing a lot of shield pressure, but not getting a kill. Zama looking to find at least one more stock on So Good Pop. And, you know, that would be a great position for Michigan State B. And they're going to find that stock with Zamo bringing it down to a last stock situation here. Pretty healthy. Just kidding that he took 40% <laughs> from a side B. Uh, Why? Uh, Why do you do this, we fit? Deep breathing is a move. 45. Yeah, Zamo was in a great position here, but deep breathing just turned that around with Sogapop looking to close this out with a sliding F tilt. Not quite. The soccer ball snipe not finding it. 140 on Zamo, very scary. Great recovery angles there from Zamo, like baiting that he is going to go low below the stage and then staking the high road mm -hmm. over so good pops drop. But you know what? Whatever. That <laughs> forward tilt has like eight hitboxes on it. That forward tilt is such a good move for catching a lot of options since it's like an anti air and just pokes in front. Just solid move from Wii Fit, and with deep breathing at that high percent, it's absolutely going to kill. Sogopop being able to take that out, but one stock left. You know, didn't really, you know, get ahead as much as you wanted, and now with picks coming up on stage for Michigan State B, I mean, you know, a lot's on the line here. They want to, you know, get this 2-0 and get this over with. Yep, let's get into this mid-game of the crew battle game number two. Uh, Picks could just make this an even Stevens really quickly. Again, we've seen how powerful this Pyro and Mithra can be, just turning yeah. a stock around instantaneously. We've seen that, and then also Hollow Bastion being the pick, having a lot of space to be able to um, do Mithra combos. But you also have to worry about, you know, as I mentioned before, Pyro Mithra having that recovery that's a little bit exploitable. Soccer Ball is going to come into play here, absolutely, if Picks finds his way in disadvantage. We're going to see two falls off the side, and then we'll get down to business here. Alrighty, let's go. Hollow Bastion. Starting things off here. Sogapop retreating to the ledge. You know, that safe area that we fit is around not using deep breathing early. Wants to hang on to it, maybe to have that fast deep breathing come out later. When Pyre's on the screen, you do not even have time to charge a, a, 
uncharged deep breathing, right? <laughs> no, She's so quick. She gets right in there. If they haven't used it, um, you can get it out for Pyra, but um, if it's already been used once, uh, it takes a long time, and you would absolutely get punished if you tried to use it. Oh, Perry, parrying the side B, not finding anything for it. Yeah, Soka Pop's just putting a lot of space in between him and Pix. Okay, there's that Nair, but yeah, Foresight getting picks out of a sticky situation here. Even percent, Northwood might be able to find a kill here. Oh, careful of that side beat from the Oh, position. that's going to be it, yeah. Yep. Picks being able to hang on to all three stocks. That down air, up air, just a solid move coming out from Pyra. You know, that's just the old reliable, the classic. Didn't even need to go for the up smash. Knew that up air with rage was going to kill, so why risk it going for an up smash? Oh, for, yeah, set up from the top platform as well. You just yep. don't even need as much distance. Mm -hmm. uh, Picks, yeah, he, he had the killer instinct there. And, you know, you can attempt to anti-air Pyra with Wii Fit's stubby hands, but... She has a really large sword, so I'm not at all surprised to see that from the disadvantage workout for picks. Here yeah. comes Jaja, Jaja again for this matchup. This is this seems like one of the harder matchups on the Michigan State B team for Jaja, considering how hard he had to work for that one stock he took in the last crew battle versus Pyra and Mithra. But we'll see how it plays out here in round number two. I'm thinking that Jaja um, believes that since he's able to you know play around with picks and maybe get inside his head a little bit that he might be able to take more stocks than, you know, a typical Kirby Pyramithra matchup. And we'll see if Pix's uh, mental game will be able to stand that test that Jaja is going to be presenting probably. We'll find out. The pick was Pokemon Stadium last time, right? But I yes. think that was Pyramithra counterpicking into Kirby. Right? Yes, so that this was is Kirby's pick. It might end up so, on the same stage anyway. I, I feel like Jada is really comfortable there. I mean, we could have seen it right here, but I didn't look at the screen, so it's going yeah, to be a I surprise. Missed it. <laughs> for me. Yeah, they're going to get started here. Three stocks apiece, Northwood and Michigan State, but Northwood being up 1-0 in the set count at the moment. Yep. Yep, PS2 going to be being the stage choice. Yeah, kind of we're seeing a repeat of what happened in the last matchup with these two. Just neither of them wanting to overextend, but Pyra Mithra is going to be making the first entry here. 15% though. Getting grabbed into the quick combo. Grave punishment adding on 51% at the moment. Good I luck. like taking the confirmed damage there with the uppy rather than trying to go for more hits with, you know, aerials. It's just very smart of picks just getting that damage that you know, you can just use for Pyra. And taking 0% too at the same time. Looking real strong at the outset of this one. Now getting a little bit risky there with that down air and going to be eating 20% for it, but not eating a needing more. Switching back to Mithra instead. A down throw at the ledge could lead to one of those edge guard situations that we had discussed previously, but it wasn't quite close enough here. Oh, but you get a tech chase. Yeah, and now you're off stage, and the down air is not going to be killing, but still, it's just so scary to deal with. JJ making up that lost ground after such a good start from Picks, and this is the down air, the stone, as I mentioned, being the choice there, as JJ, JJ is able to take that first stock. Looking real good, too, just after he was down. Like, it was like 90% uncontested, I think, on JJ, and then just yep. found that momentum right back. Oh, but here comes Picks on the Pyra, that same combo that ended the last game. Yeah, being at two stocks apiece, but we'll see if this stock starts off the same way as the first one did. Just a lot of back and forth, a lot of good gameplay, just not overextending in this neutral. But the grab does go J Jaw's way, gets a dash attack for your troubles, and it's always so scary with those down airs presenting themselves on the ledge. But it looks like Pyro will make it back again. Gets a blazing end for troubles and looks for the Ooh. air dodge, but doesn't get it. Mm -hmm. No it's tag! Tech, yeah. Unfortunate for Picks there, missing the tech and taking an early stock there as JJ is looking to make this close happen. 25% playing a bit more aggressive. Yeah, those reads that Pyro was going for just weren't quite landing. Looking for a couple of those air dodges into forward smashes, right? But mm -hmm. just not showing that he'll press the button is JJ. These final cutters coming out, being a little aggressive here. And picks in a bit of a situation at 70% compared to JJ and down a stock as well. Looking a little risky here as they stay on Pyra. 
final cutter once again. JJ just going in and out, in and out with these moves, looking to catch picks off guard. Gets the grab in the corner, throwing this Kirby away. Looking to, again, maybe get like a back air. Yep. Yeah! Good bait coming out there from Picks, not getting phased by the fake out final cutter and taking it down to one stock. Four to four for Michigan State B and Northwood. And JJ being <laughs> able to use Lightning Buster if he can combo it. Kirby is having a great hair day. Just <laughs> the best. Wig. <laughs> <laughs> well, every wig day is a good wig day, right? Because it doesn't change. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know it. But here come that back air. Kirby looking to get that down air, and Pix is going to be taken out as JJ has that wig on and being able to hang on to one stock for this. Looking real good, too. Uh, if Kirby wins with a wig, he should wear the wig in the victory screen. Mm -hmm. That would be a good addition. I don't know why. I, I'm probably. I'm pretty sure I'm not the first person to have thought of that. Somebody's got to mod that into the game where Sakurai's got to put that in the next game. <laughs> Just that's the only <laughs> thing he does. He doesn't do anything else with the game. It's just doing that one thing of Curry has to wear his hat in the victory screen. That's it. That's the next patch, and they do nothing else. <laughs> he just got a patch that's going to happen in four years when the next patch happens. Sorry. <laughs> Aster coming to the sticks to uh, hold the anchor spot for Michigan State B. He looked real good as the point player in game number one. And then the Copal show happened right after. And Copal still hasn't even played yet, right? So. Oh, yeah. That's the point to put in. Yeah, Copal hasn't even played. So they have to worry about that. And Astor's got to take out four stocks to three. Absolutely possible for Michigan State B if they want to stay in this. Yeah, here we go. Astor locking in here as JJ is going to be the first, big, the first person in his path. Greninja has a pretty exploitable recovery by Kirby as well. Really, any of those recoveries that just don't have like an advancing hitbox, right? Mm -hmm. That's the thing that a Kirby feasts on with that down air. So, but, but to be fair, Greninja does have some options. Shadow Sneak me an option as well as substitute angled upwards. You know, if you go for a downer against him and then you substitute up, you just fly up past the stage, past Kirby to get back on stage first with a Hydro Pump. Those mix-ups will come into play once they get off stage. Right now, it is neutral versus neutral in Pokemon Stadium 2. Taking it very slow with these shurikens. JJ trying to low profile the water shurikens, but if, J uh, if Aster charges it just a tiny bit, I don't think Kirby can low profile that. So JJ's going to have to be careful about that. And he's getting the first percent here, only 10%, but these forward airs, he's trying to start something up with these down tilts, trying to extend a little bit. Kirby can low profile a lot of Greninja's falling aerials, though. They just have that particularly strange shape to their disjoints where that low profile of Kirby just goes under them. Like the neutral air has like, a, you know, it's like a circle, right? So mm -hmm. uh, it'll go under like the corners and air quotes of the circle. I think the play there for that is going to be a Tomahawk down tilt if JJ doesn't react with his shield. And we've seen how well down tilt works out for Greninja, comboing into up smash, comboing into forward air, and against a light character like Kirby, could lose his stock earlier than expected if Aster is able to play that to his advantage. There's the down tilt coming out, but getting actually missing with that forward air, and JJ pushing this to an even game. When that dare could have led to so much, but didn't get Barely the, avoiding the forward smash. Yeah, didn't get the trip there. Unfortunate for JJ, but still getting that percent, using the neutral air to push Greninja off stage, Ooh. and Aster's going to be losing a stock with Hydro Pump not snapping ledge. So you think he meant to go to the right first and then snap? Like that, uh, was, that was intent. I, I thought that, that looked like a misinput to me at first. Maybe. I mean, if you go back to the stage immediately and JJ's ready for it, you just have to mix up with your Hydro Pump. But. JJ's really pushing this advantage right here, almost getting back to up to even. Could even take a second stock, but it doesn't going to be the case. Forward air is going to be taking out Kirby at 70 as Aster gets two stocks left to deal with Northwest Northwood's last player. Unfortunate to see that. I, I want to call that an unforced error there from Aster, where he, he just didn't quite make the recovery. But yeah. he can make the run. Copal is a a very strong player, obviously, but I not mean, infallible. We saw last time this was the exact same thing that happened in the first game. 
here. Three stocks on Copal, two stocks on Aster, and Copal won in that one. So we'll see if Aster has an answer, but this is the, you know, the same setup as last time. Will we see the same you know, timeline or is something going to change here? We'll have to find out. Copal is actually walking away from the stage for a little bit, maybe just uh, getting some water or something before he heads on up. Definitely going to be some time. Aster has to lock in here. He knows that this is the last chance North or Michigan State B has at the moment to push this to a game three in the set count. But there is a loser's bracket of this, so yeah. uh, this oh, won't yeah. be the end of Michigan State B's run. <clears throat> However, you want to stay at winners. Come on. That, that's yeah, of course. a lot more crew battles you have to play in the lower bracket. And these crew battles, you know, we're going on an hour on this starting one. I mean, they can take it out of you. That's the thing. It's like, um, you know, you have to play so many games, your mental starts to waver after playing so many sets. That's why it's so important in singles brackets to stay in winners for as long as you can because you skip those rounds in losers where you have to use your mental, you have to use your, you know, gameplay, and you start to get tired. So staying in winners would be ideal for both teams. But Yesterday is a great example because that singles bracket ended at around, what, like 9, 9.30 p.m.? Yeah, that I'd day say just started. About. That day started at 10 a.m. That's about 12 hours of Smash, mm -hmm. consecutively. So, endurance is a thing for sure when it comes to competing at this highest level here in Smash Ultimate. And these players, uh, if, if you can stay in the winners bracket, that will conserve some stamina for later. Yeah, and I really haven't mentioned it before, but I love how Aster keeps picking the song for uh, Small Battlefield or like Battlefield just because sometimes it, it's that music that calms you a little bit. You know, some people play well when they have, like, high-energy music going on, but those, you know, slow songs in between can remind you, you know, keep it cool, don't overextend, don't lose yourself, pay attention to the game. And, you know, Aster was doing this yesterday, he's been doing this today, and just adds a little bit more. You know what I appreciate? I appreciate that he picks the calm music that's actually good. <laughs> I was going to say, not yeah, like it, environmental it noises. I was going to say, something. environmental noises is a meme. That doesn't count. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about like this that adds a little bit more than just silence. Or the one, what was the one from uh, the plankton stage? Oh, that was just literally no uh, that's music. That's just electroplankton, yeah. which is based off the uh, sounds in the stage. But if you're playing on FD of that stage, it just doesn't do anything. <laughs> Here we go, Northwood to three, Michigan State two. This is going to be our last game of the set, regardless of who wins. And Aster running away with 70% here, looking to make a quick lead and come back. And Koba looking for something really cheesy. Down throw, down smash was the option under the platform, looking for a spot dodge or something. And that would have been pretty strong, but I don't know if it would have done much at 20%. I mean, at the end of the day, that's just damage. And regardless of how many stocks are left, this is the end of the set. So the present does matter here um, more so than other sets where, you know, you can hang on to a stock for the next match. Oh! Copal not getting out his recovery in time and ending up losing a stock here. Michigan State that could be B huge. finding it even. Yeah, I was going to say, this is exactly what Michigan State B needs. The top battlefield platform, Aster can take his sweet, sweet time and picking a moment to advance versus the crown. But it is actually K Rule who has taken the stage control here dominantly, opening up in the second stock, throwing all these projectiles off to the side. How are you going to get up versus the cannonball barrage? Copal makes sure that he has enough time to place himself in that perfect position on the battlefield platform and, you know, let go of the blunderbuss to make sure that you can't wait on ledge forever. I'm going to down air you if you decide to hold on. That up throw suplex being the kill move here. Aster down to the final stock for Michigan State B in this situation. But now Aster's able to turn on here. Gets a double jump for your troubles. Goes for the shadow sneak, but armoring through it. Here is K. Rule. Still right. taking his lumps, though. Yeah, I mean, 80%. You have a little bit more health in this. But Aster needs to find a kill here real soon, starting things up with the falling Nair F uh, forward air, not getting it um, for a kill. All right, knock him away. Play okay. around that belly armor super expertly by you mixing the down tilt in. And now, yeah, you yeah. wanted the substitute on the falling ne neutral air belly. Yep. And that would have worked out perfectly. I mean, angling that upwards, K. Rule would have probably died from that. But Aster wanting to find a kill here real soon. Down tilt forward air. Falling out of it. I don't know if K. Rule is out of the percent where that confirms now. 
Hester taking a lot of percent here, more than he'd probably like, as that back air won't be finding a kill either. 180 for Copal, still off stage though. Oh, Ooh, that the ledge, re-grab! That ledge trump was so sick from Aster. I, it didn't quite kill, but it was yeah. awesome. Okay, crowd's getting hyped for both teams as they're both on their final stock. This is the closest crew battle I think I've seen out of these past two days. Everything is on the line here for both teams. Yeah, th this is the first stock of champions we've had in a crew battle, I want to say, or at least that I've commentated. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, it's just so tense here. Both these players not wanting to overextend playing through their ranges. Aster looking to find a bit more percent than he'd like. Oh, yeah, 40. Bringing it back to that even, getting caught oh. by Thunderbus. Get grabbed out of it and be careful of that back air. Always a threat when Copal's on the sticks. Okay. Coming in with their nares, both of them dodging out of one another, but Aster being able to find some back airs and push Copal to the ledge. Play slow and steady around that crown from the disadvantage state. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's holding mid-stage for dear life, not giving it back to Copal at all. Just that good position that you need. So tense. Copal just throwing out that crown, trying to get a little bit extra percent. Knock Aster away from the middle of the stage. Ooh! That blunderbuss almost grabbed, but perfect spacing on the neutral air here from Aster. And that has brought this game within 2% on this final stock. Yeah, Aster taking the lead here, using Hydro Pump, but not finding anything. Oh. Okay, take it slow and steady. Yeah, respect that armor at every step here, Aster. Gets the down tilt, but no up smash confirm. Retreating away from the blunderbuss. Yeah, just really scary. Aster not overextending and just playing this very well. Copal playing just very safe as well. Both of them at these percents. Aster is going to be the one holding onto stage here as Copal tries to return forward air and uses the air dodge too. Copal Ooh. doesn't have much Aster to offer. Copal almost reversed that in an instant with a down air onto the Hydro Pump, but everyone's alive. Another forward air, not enough to take the stock. Air dodge burned now, and is Aster going to advance? No, that is no, the up Very air. scary. Oh, this could be maybe a kill here soon. 160, Copal extending his recovery with the up air and just having such a hard find, finding his way back on stage, and Aster drops it, and Copal answers with that dash attack. The ledge trump was a little too slow for Aster. He had the right idea, but the buffered getup from Copal gives him the stage, turns it right around with that big belly dash attack. Mm -hmm. And what a valiant effort from Aster to almost 